Welcome to Seek Spotlight Leader Conversations, where industry collaborates on eco-efficient minerals. Seek is a not-for-profit and we're proud to help share the latest thinking and new innovations from around the world that can reduce mining's energy, emissions and water footprint. And thanks to our sponsors for making this possible. Today, I am delighted to be speaking to Eric Wasmond, Vice President Global Flotation Business at Eries. Eric has spent more than 30 years working in technical and commercial roles worldwide related to process engineering, extractive metallurgy, and mining projects. In his current role, he manages Eries' worldwide flotation business, whose mission is to deliver unique life cycle technology solutions for their customers in the metallurgical space. Um, Eric, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Alba. So my first question, with COP26, there's now a keen focus by investors on net zero. What is Erie's doing in this area and what are your thoughts on industry opportunities? Well, from Erie's perspective, Alva, net zero is about two things. First of all, it's about a transition over time to renewable energy sources. Erie's is supporting the build out of the electric economy by working with miners to sustainably deliver the additional amounts of green metals, especially a number of the base metals, as well as lithium and graphite. As an example, some forecasts have estimated an, an additional 10 million tons per year of copper alone. Secondly, net zero is about reducing energy consumption, especially in flotation and comminution, which we believe is significantly higher than it needs to be. We're delivering breakthrough technologies like our stack cell and hydrofloat product lines, which are allowing the extractive industries to use less energy and water. And, and do you think there's a role for SEEK to help collaborate on solutions across industry? Yeah, great question again, Alba. Absolutely. As we're seeing with the COP26 itself, a group approach is often the best way to develop a consensus and initiate important changes among parties that may lack the knowledge, resources, or the will to act on their own. In fact, Aries has some experience with this. We're the founding member of something similar with the Coarse Particle Flotation Consortium at the University of Queensland, where most of the industry players have joined together with us and with the university to work together to make coarse particle flotation a reality through the world using the hydrofloat. The role of non-competitive NGOs like SEEK in building this cooperation is key. So we know that comminution is key to energy efficiency and productivity. What's the impact of new technologies in this area and how do you think we can reduce emissions and consumption of energy and water? Well, we participated in an engineering study a few years back with uh, Patterson Cook and Floor and one of our um, mining partners, and we showed that the energy consumption of a secondary mill could be reduced by 30 to 50 percent by increasing the required grind size for flotation. And that also reduces the energy for dewatering, and it also reduces the requirement for conventional flotation. And that would have a significant impact at many sites, especially where electricity is generated from fossil fuels. Um, what are you the most excited about in this area? Um, for example, any advances, innovations, or other new options for industry? Erie's has two product lines that enable less energy and water use. We've already talked about the hydrofloat, which enables coarse particle flotation. But another very exciting one is the stack cell, which is a two-stage mechanical cell. And what we've been able to show and scale up to commercial uh, scale is that by dividing each cell into two stages, flotation can be done much more efficiently. And that means less space, less energy, and less material that's required to get the same amount of metallurgical efficiency. And what do you think is the future of mineral processing, um, say in the immediate future by 2030 and by 2050? Yeah, that's, that's a great question again. One obvious trend is that we know concentrator plants are going to process much more material as the demand for green metals increases and head grades decline worldwide. This is gonna put much more pressure on miners to develop more sustainable technologies that minimize their impact on the natural environment. Comminution technologies will have to become more targeted. Coarse particle flotation will be part of that and increasing the efficiency of all the unit operations and reduce, reducing water use will be part of that as well. So both our products and the, the, the initiatives that we're taking fit in perfectly with that trend. What is your vision for potential opportunities in the future of industry? If the politicians are correct and we're able to achieve our goal, the energy for future mining will eventually come from renewable sources. So that's, that's going to happen. Another important trend will be more efficient recycling, which will be very important because the green economy is going to be a metals intensive economy. 
In fact, it's really heartening to see some miners are starting to refer to themselves as materials companies rather than uh, miners. And this reflects the idea that there will be significant opportunities for mining metal from manufactured goods at the end of their life rather than just throwing them away. So could you share some of your thoughts on SEEK and any potential value opportunities you see, for example, new ideas for collaborative projects? The SEEK is a, an important forum for major stakeholders to be able to work collaboratively, to study and benchmark their use of combination, and in the future, maybe other aspects of uh, the mining enterprise as well, in light of some of the societal and environmental challenges that we're all being faced with. The SEEK has already published some great work around water use, and that just wouldn't have had the impetus or the same result if your members had been trying to act individually. So working as a group, you can accomplish a lot more. Could you share some more detail on some of Erie's recent initiatives, for example, the uptake in business case for quartz particle flotation and examples of where this makes most impact? I think what we're seeing in terms of recent initiatives, in the first stage of the adoption of coarse particle flotation, we were looking at scavenging the tails. And that's because conventional flotation leaves 10 to 20 percent of the material as a, as a coarse, semi-liberated semi semi material that can't be captured with flotation. So the, the initial business case was looking at scavenging tails and getting an extra amount of nickel from the same asset. Now we're seeing putting coarse particle flotation right into the mill circuit. And that allows the generation of a coarse tail, which is uh, easier to dewater. It re requires less water having to leave the property. Also less energy because we can now grind um, with 30 to 50% less um, energy and also less material that needs to be treated by conventional flotation. So in the long run, the hydrofloat and coarse particle flotation is going to go, instead of the, at the tail end of the circuit, it's going to go right into the heart of the circuit. And that's where you're going to get the advantages in terms of a safer tail, less water, less energy, and smaller footprint of conventional flotation. Coarse particle flotation and, and the hydrofloat, they apply to any, any process that uses conventional flotation. So base metal and gold are uh, early adopters, also traditionally uh, phosphate and potash, and we're seeing a lot of activity in uh, platinum group metals as well. So it applies to any opportunity where you're uh, grinding and floating material. It, it's being adopted throughout the world. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uptake right now in, initially the, the early adopters were in Australia, we're seeing a lot of activity in the Americas now, uh, especially South America, but also reaching up into uh, the United States and also in Africa as well. And how about water or tailings footprint? Coarse particle flotation can dramatically reduce the extent of fine tailings. And besides the energy savings that I just discussed, a coarser tail is also a lot safer and stable environmentally. Great. Thank you so much, Eric, for your great insights today. Um, it's great to hear about all the really interesting work Aries is doing. Thanks very much, Alva, and I appreciate the opportunity to be, uh, to be joining you today. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, get in contact, contribute your work, and join SEEK's followers. You can tap into free articles, join our events online or in person, and watch and share future podcasts, videos, and webinars. A big thanks to our valued sponsors and visionary volunteers, including our guests who we're interviewing who make our work our not-for-profit work possible to help accelerate eco-efficient minerals. Thank you. <laughs>